Welcome back to another episode of Finance Alliance Express. Today, we're talking about the visual aids for finance, specifically all the different types of financial charts and graphs that can transform complex data into something almost anyone can easily understand. Up first, we have the classic bar chart. A bar chart uses rectangular bars to represent different data categories. The height and length of the bars represents the value for that specific category. Bar charts are best for comparing metrics across different groups, maybe revenue by product line, expenses divided up by department, budget amounts over time, and that sort of thing. For example, say I was looking at my business sales revenue month by month. I could throw together a quick bar graph with colored bars to represent each month. And by looking at the bar heights, I could immediately spot if the revenue was trending up or down by month. Pretty handy for getting an at-a-glance view. Another great option is a line graph. Picture data points connected together by, you guessed it, lines. The key thing is it maps data over time as the line moves left to right along the x-axis. Line graphs are great for visualizing time series financial data as an expense graph such as revenue, profit loss, cash flow, or other metrics over a period of time. Line graphs are also great because you can layer multiple data lines in a single graph. Let's say you wanted to compare this year's monthly sales figures versus last year's. A two-line chart makes this super simple. Now let's move on to somewhat of a controversial option in the finance space and that's pie charts. A pie chart divides data into proportional slices of a circular pie to represent percentages or proportions of a whole. This might be a great option for you if you want to show the breakdown of a whole into parts, like revenue by region, expense categories, or allocation of a budget. Next up, we have scatter plots. Don't worry, it's not as complicated as it sounds. A scatter plot is a type of mathematical chart that shows the relationship between two variables on a graph. It positions data points based on an X and Y axis scale to visualize if and how the variables might correlate. In finance, you can use this type of visual to compare two metrics, like recurring revenue and sales expenses. After plotting out some data points, you can observe if costs rise in correlation with the revenue gains. The patterns that emerge can reveal useful intel to guide budget decisions, and you can also use a scatter plot to help spot data quirks if something doesn't align with an expected trend. A great option for visualizing correlations between large data sets with many variables is a heat map. Unlike maps that show real places, a heat map uses color coding on a table or grid to represent data variables. Typically, the darker shades equate to higher concentrations or densities of whatever is being measured. Up next is the area chart. You can think of it like a close cousin to the line chart. It also displays financial data over time. But the key difference is the space underneath the line gets colored in to demonstrate the area or magnitude of change. So for example, a company reviewing annual profit growth over five years could use an area chart. Shading in the space below the profit line draws attention to the size and scope of rising income levels. All right, now let's move on to the stacked bar chart. This type of chart splits each bar into colored sections. Each section represents a subcategory making up the total. To put it in money terms, Let's say I stack regional sales data within each quarterly earnings bar. One color for Europe, another for North America, another for Asia, and so on. With a stacked bar chart, you can instantly observe quarterly performance and regional contributions. If you're feeling a little creative, you might want to use a bubble chart to display data points as circles with varying sizes based on a third variable. Say I plot target market size on the x-axis and growth potential on the y-axis. Each bubble could signify a geographical expansion location. Now, based on projected investment costs for each targeted country, I can blow those bubbles up bigger or smaller accordingly. So with one chart, you can visually weigh market size, growth outlooks, and resource needs for major decisions like where to expand overseas. Moving on to another great option, if you need to showcase how a bunch of positives and negatives compile into a final total, and that's waterfall charts. True to their name, these visuals display value levels that cascade downward, like a waterfall, into a final sum. Step by step, you can visualize the what and the how behind the total metric ticking up or down. Now let's move on to the box and whisker plot for all your data interpreters. This multifunctional graph outlines five key statistical reference points. Minimum, maximum, median, first and third quartile ranges to distill even large data sets 
down to digestible visuals. For financial analysts, having the extremes, typical value bandwidths and SKUs mapped can serve as helpful findings from customer spend variances to unequal product line results. Finally, let's talk about the radar chart. A radar chart, which is also nicknamed the spider chart, has multiple axes projecting from a center point to display data for multiple variables. It's best for comparing multiple metrics like financial KPIs across business units or departments to see performance patterns and profiles. And that wraps up this episode of Finance Alliance Express. I hope this overview of charts, graphs, heat maps, and more left you feeling better equipped to transform those intimidating numbers into crystal clear visual stories. If you found this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos to help you excel within your finance career. See you in the next one.